If you're feeling distracted, overwhelmed, and like you don't know what you should be doing on a daily basis as a realtor, then this is going to give you clarity of what you should be doing in order to build momentum and feel like the progress is being made every single day that you wake up in your real estate business. A lot of agents, unfortunately, overcomplicate what it takes to build a successful business, but that's why I brought on Mauricio Lopez, who's consistently done over 50 deals every single year, over 20 million in volume, just by doing three things right every single day. And I can tell you that you're going to be absolutely shocked when you hear what his daily KPI or metric is that he does every single day that has led to 50 deals per year consistently, because you're going to sit there and realize that you could be doing it as well. So before bringing on Mauricio, I also want to mention a couple things. Number one, we're going to be diving into a postcard strategy, which I don't see anybody talking but i've actually never heard this before that works wonders when it comes to getting listings and i'm going to link all of this content below so that you can check out mauricio and book a call with him if you would like his direct one-on-one -on -one support because he's helped people just like you go from struggling and feeling overwhelmed and burnt out to breaking six figures and even going on to start very successful teams and their own brokerages so let's bring on mauricio and break it down and simplify it so we can take a step back and realize that real estate's not that complicated if you just know what you need to do every single day and by the end of this video you will know exactly that all right guys so welcome back and today i'm really excited to talk with marisa lopez who is going to be really helping unpack the activities that people need to do in order to build business but i think one of the things that's going to be really powerful about your story mauricio is that you've kind of gone through the trajectory of what most agents project their future is going to look like. It's almost like climbing the corporate ladder within real estate of, you know, agent team, brokerage, things like that. Um, and you're able to kind of talk about some of the uh, realistic expectations along that way. So I'm, I'm excited because this is going to be one that really paints a picture of what agents should be doing now, but where they could be going in the future. And uh, yeah, this is going to be one that relates to a lot of people, I think. So super excited to have you on, man. Hey, thanks, Mike. And I really appreciate you setting this up, man. This is awesome. Thank you. Definitely. Well, you know, let's let's kind of set the tone a little bit with who you are, where you're from, what kind of got you to this point um, in terms of getting into real estate. And then we'll start diving into those daily activities that I think a lot of people need to put more emphasis on if they're not really building the momentum that they would like to be right now. 100%. Yeah. So a little bit of about me, you know, I've been in the business now for for seven years, and I've I've kind of gone through it all. Like you mentioned, you know, I've kind of climbed the the real estate corporate ladder, uh, as so to speak. Uh, got licensed in uh, you know late 2017. Uh, started my business just like everyone else, I think, or, or, or like most agents do, part time. You know, trying to learn the business and see how things actually uh, work. Um, I, I'm blessed enough to have a a good background in like digital marketing and focused a lot of my business on generating leads early on. And I think that was what kind of helped me build that momentum in my business. I was able to do, you know, a little over 6 million in volume my first year, uh, that was about 19 transactions or so. So it was a good, good head start to the business. You know, things were going so well that by year two, I was able to, you know, start a team and, and build the momentum and just keep that, uh, the, the, the consistency going in my business. Um, from there I ended up, you know, uh, starting a team, I took over an office actually. So, um, after I built my team, I saw the success there. I, like you said, the corporate ladder that people think the next move is, you know, after you start your team, well, now you want to own the business. And while that might seem like a, a smart strategic way to go about building on your career, um, I, I personally realized that owning a business just wasn't what I thought it was going to be in terms of like my time, energy, and effort spent in building the business. And so, you know, after doing that for about three, four years, uh, I came across the opportunity to, to move my entire operation over to the cloud-based model here with eXp. And so we've been here now for about a year um, and we've seen such a tremendous difference in personally how I operate my business, but not only that, how much flexibility I have to no longer worry about, you know, the liability that comes with owning a, owning a, a brokerage and everything that comes with it. Um, all the headaches, as, as you can say. Um, and, you know, being a family man, I've got, I've got toddlers. I've got, you know, my oldest is five. I've got a three-year-old, I got a one-year-old and I got a baby on the way. And so I realized early on, you know, I, I wanted to grow up with my kids and be able to spend that time with them and not be so focused on doing other things that weren't really moving my business forward. And so being able to be in a position now where we are with eXp, it, it allows me to do that tremendously. So, 
um, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. That's kind of where I'm at now. Yeah, it's incredible. And I think that, you know, we'll be able to get into that balance conversation, you know, in a few minutes here, because that's so, so important. You know, I think that's even something that, that I've really struggled with over the last years. And, and I'm, you know, making a conscious effort to change that going forward, um, because I understand the importance of it. And, and a lot of people get lost in that. But, you know, let's kind of kick it off with those daily activities, because I think, one of the things that at least helped me in the beginning was having those non-negotiable daily activities that are going to move the needle in my business. And a lot of people feel like their tires are spinning. You know, they get to the end of a day, they work 10, 12, 14 hours, but they don't feel like their business made any progress. And a lot of times they're focused on busy activities or they're so distracted, they don't even know what they should be doing on a daily basis to the point where they're just kind of stuck. And so what's kind of your take on an agent that maybe doesn't really know what they should be doing, where they should be going, and what can they do to start engineering a daily calendar and routine to make sure that they start to get toward that next transaction? Yeah, man. Uh, I think it really just comes down to building the momentum for yourself in, in, in how you want to carry your business, right? Um, for me, the, the, the daily non-negotiables are things that I do, again, they're non-negotiable. I do them whether I feel like it or not. And, and that's how you want to carry your business. And that's how you want to do things. So as an example, like for me, I have to, I, every single day, no matter what, I make it a habit to, to at a bare minimum, add five new people to my database, right? Adding them to my CRM. Um, and I know the power of that, the compounding effect that that has in my business, right? If I do that every single day for a year, just five people at minimum, you're talking over, you know, 1800 people in a year if you do it every single day. Um, and, you know, the likelihood of maybe 1% of those people actually transacting that year or maybe the following year is, is pretty high. And, and, and that's really how you build a, um, a sustainable and pr like predictable business is it's a numbers game. So doing things every single day that are going to impact those numbers in your business is what's really going to move the needle forward in your business. And so, again, a non-negotiable for me is making sure that I'm adding people to my database and the importance of follow up. Right. Follow up is, is so crucial. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I, I mean, we're, we're in a society where, you know, people expect instant gratification. Um, and for a new agent, especially, it, it's, it's a hard realization to know that the things that you are doing now, you're not going to see uh, results for the next 60, 90, or even a year later, right? But you have to continually do it no matter what. So if you keep working on the business and doing those daily actions, you'll see those results. Um, and, and knowing that it is a long-term game, you have to be in it for the, for the long haul with this business if you wanna see any sort of success. I mean, we're seeing all these changes that are happening to our industry uh, and, and, and you start seeing how it can negatively affect people that are new and, and don't have the right, the right foundation for their business. So, you know, as a new agent, th those are the things you want to focus on is the things that are actually going to build momentum in your business. And so for me, that's been adding people to my database and and following up and ha just having conversations. Uh, I think we forget at the end of the day, you know, yes, we're realtors, but our, our primary objective is generating leads, generating business. Because without leads, without any sort of business, you don't have any clients to serve. You don't have any people to work with. You don't have any closings that can happen. Uh, and, and that's what leads to, uh, you know, a lot of people have that um, roller coaster business where they focus their energy on a couple clients. They get their clients under contract uh, and all their time, energy and effort is focused on those people. But then when they close, they forget to do the things that got them those clients, which is the prospecting, the lead generation, the consistent daily follow up. Um, so just having that foundation in your business that alone will set you apart from so many other realtors that don't don't necessarily take this as a business, treat it as a business, you know, so. Yeah, it's, it's one of those conversations that, and we'll dive a little bit deeper here because I'll ask you a question about it, but, you know, a lot of people overcomplicate what it takes to build momentum in their business. And, you, you know, a lot of people hear that all you did was add five people to your database a day and just think, well, that's it. And, you know, there's even a couple of people in our, in our organization and there's one guy in particular, you know, who went from being a janitor and being, you know, broke living in somebody's living room on a couch to being an icon agent, you know, breaking half a million dollars in GCI this year just by adding five people a day in his database for the last year. Like that's that's all that he did is made to the point every single day, Monday to Sunday, five people a day. And, you know, a lot of people kind of, again, going back to looking at, 
the endless leads and the hundreds of leads and the hundreds of this and and it needs to be this big grandiose plan with all of this abundance but it's really just stacking the simple consistent things over an extended period of time which co has the compounding effect so based on your opinion you know and based on your experience what did you do to add those five people a day to your database and then what because i think a lot of people will then okay say i need to add five people to my database a day but what the heck do i do with them yeah yeah i think that's a that's a great question there um you have to make sure that you're staying on top of those of those people right so um the, the easiest way for me what i found to add these people is especially when i first started you have all this momentum as a, as a new licensed realtor like the first thing i did it was i let the world know i was an agent like i would introduce myself as a realtor my name is marisa i'm a realtor that would be my, that would be my introduction so just having conversations with people and um you know reconnecting with old people you know the power of social media the power of facebook messaging people that i hadn't talked to in a while checking in with them and and uh letting them know where i'm at in my life and, and obviously building that conversation uh was the easiest way for me to start adding people into my database you know uh once you get through you know the people that you know and the people that you connect with then you obviously want to start looking into some either paid paid forms of advertising uh, or other marketing channels to, to generate leads for you to add people to your database um, but that was it that was the simplest way to start right now what i did with those is you know you have to have a good crm that can track your business your you know there's so many crms out there and and yeah. I, I tell this to every every person that i talk to, every agent that i talk to a crm is only as good as how you utilize it right you can have the best crm in the world but if you're not actively utilizing it and managing your client uh lead flow and and, and managing your um you, you know your activity on your crm then it serves you no good right so making sure that you're organized and having everything in your crm is is, is key so for me, right, one of the things that I would do is if I knew this person, the, the lead, if I if I knew where they lived, I would send them a monthly market report, just showing them activity in their neighborhood. Um, you know, they, they just it, it gives them, me a nice way to just stay on top of um, their neighborhood and, and gives them a reason to you know check their email and see you know what what's what's activities going on in their neighborhood. And if it was a lead that was like interested in learning about the market. I would send them like a basic generic market uh, list, list of homes for sale in an area. Um, I wouldn't get specific unless we had that conversation about specifics. And then you're talking, you know, you're leading people through the funnel. At that point, you're you're nurturing them or you're pre-qualifying them and finding out how serious and their timeline and things like that. But just as a basic, basic form of like adding people to my database and my CRM is with it with a generic uh, market report based on the area or a generic uh, list of properties for them to view right um i think a lot of people forget the importance of bringing people into your ecosystem when it comes to, to uh, building your business um, the more information that they see of you the more you become kind of top of mind for them subconsciously right if they see your stuff continuously uh, and if you're you know if you have all the people in your crm but then you've also added them on social media and then you're constantly posting about what you do your business your family your life people will relate to some point and again it's a way to spark and start conversations um so I, to your point mike i think too many people overcomplicate the simplicity that it does take to build this business and, and and it really is that simple is doing those daily actions adding you know as little as five people a day that that's what's built my business so far and that's what's continuing to build my business now the compounding effect of that is going to be you know if you do this co consistently right i've doing i've been doing this now for seven years i now get people in my database that i haven't talked to i haven't connected with in in such a long time but they're still getting my emails I, matter of fact i had a client uh, a couple months ago they came into my database in 2018 right they've been constantly getting information uh about the areas that they were interested in um they just closed on a property that they saw from one of my emails they reached out to me and said hey i like this property can we go check it out i had that conversation we got them connected with the lender and we were able to walk them through that process and just by the mere fact of them getting my emails and getting the list of properties and it was branded to me like that per that lead could have been getting a list from zillow or, or any other website and they could have gone somewhere else right but just the sheer fact that it was my email like you know sometimes timing is everything too right so those opportunities 
can present themselves and and it's just a matter of doing that daily and and, and seeing how that comp that can compound year over year yeah that, that makes complete sense i think if people had the structure and the discipline to just do the very simple things they would start to feel the momentum instead of chasing all of these different distractions because at the end of the day everything works it's just it's only going to work if you make it work by doing it consistently for long enough and you know that kind of leads into one of the conversations that i'd love to have with you related to the postcards because a lot of people are talking about the creative, innovative, unique marketing strategies that are, you know, super hot and trending and relevant. And that's great. But, you know, you're not the first person that I've heard talk about the fact that postcards are, are almost making a comeback. You know, less mail is being sent than ever. Um, and so now mail is actually standing out more than ever in the last, you know, recent decade or so. And I don't really know anybody that's talking about this and sharing a strategy. So you've alluded to the fact that you've you've been able to get results with postcards. Walk us through what that looks like. Yeah, man, it, it is definitely a uh, underutilized lead generation strategy for realtors. You know, a lot of a lot of agents, to your point, see all these cool shiny objects and and get distracted by these different uh, lead generation strategies. Uh, but they for, they forget the simplicity, man. I mean, postcards have been around forever, uh, and they're still around because they obviously work. You know, p businesses wouldn't be spending money sending postcards if they weren't getting a return on that investment, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, less mails get less less mail, like physical mail, is going out. You know, people are getting their inbox, you know, their email inbox cluttered, but their actual mailbox is is decreasing, right? So it, it does it does create opportunity if you can strategically position your business through through postcards. And uh, yeah, I've seen some tremendous success through postcards. Um, kind of same thing to that longevity. I've been doing postcards since I started my business, so it's been you know it's it's been a consistent part of my lead generation strategy. Um, I think what, what's worked for me, and I think it, it it can work for a lot of people, is you know. There are, like you said, there are so many ways to generate business. There's, you know, hundreds of ways for you to get leads. But if you if you try too many at once, to your point, you're going to get distracted or you're not going to give it your the, the full effort that that strategy needs for you to see results. So focus on, you know, just a handful, two or three. Focus on two or three lead generation strategies that you're good at, that you can see yourself doing consistently and just stick to that. You know, if you do it long enough, you will see results. That's that's just the reality of, of the business. Um, but when it came to postcards, I saw results uh, pr pretty pretty immediately, and I and that's why I continue to do it. Um, for me, the, the the fastest way was there. There was two strategies when it came to postcards. I would do uh, farming, right? So sending the same uh, postcards to the same you know five hundred to a thousand houses in, in an area that I want to work in and, and focus my business in. Um, and that's, you know, that was very successful. I would send a postcard every three months, uh, whether it was like just a, a market update of what's been happening in this immediate little neighborhood or, you know, tips on, you know, you know, um, holidays are coming up. Here's how to make a drink for this holiday or whatever. Anything to just stay relevant and stay top of mind. And again, um, anything that you can provide of value. So all my postcards always have a call to action. My call to action is is. A simple QR code that leads them to my website or to a uh, you know a home valuation uh, site or something, right? Just anything that can can capture information. And so doing that consistently through through the farming, I was able to generate a, a, a couple of deals from that. Um, now I have a a, a marketing a, a postcard strategy for every listing that I take on and every every transaction that I close. So every time I close a transaction, if it's in a new area that I haven't done business in that I want to continue doing business in. I'll do the same thing. I use a uh, EDDM every door direct mail here. Uh, I'll create the postcards and we'll send it to, you know, the surrounding thousand to 2000 houses. Um, from, from experience, I've, I've talked to other people that have tried postcards and they say they don't work. And then I ask them, how many postcards did you actually send? And they're like, well, I send a hundred postcards. Well, again, it's a numbers game, right? If you're sending a hundred postcards, you can't expect much, but if you're sending a thousand, 2000, 5,000, and you get just one percent of those to click on your, you know, click on your QR code or, or give you a call. You're generating business from a volume game, and so um, every listing that I take on or every uh, property that I close, 
I'm sending that neighborhood a postcard and I'm sharing the the story of the transaction, you know, how we how we came about finding either finding the buyer of the property or helping the seller sell that property and 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 walking them through that journey and sharing that we can create the same results for them if they're interested and and giving them that call to action. Um Again, th this goes to the longevity and you never know when a homeowner or, or a seller will call you back from those postcards. I went to an appointment where he called me and he's like, hey, I got one of your postcards. I'm interested in selling my property. I show up and it was like one of the very first postcards that I that I ever sent out. He pulled it out of his, you know, his drawer. It was all ripped up and it was all like old and he had kept it for like three years before he called me. So again, you, you never know when, when, when these opportunities will present themselves, but if you're not constantly taking action to make those opportunities even happen, then, then you won't see any results. So yeah, the, the postcard strategy has been wonderful. I still do it. Um, it's a consistent part of my, uh, of my, uh, of my business and I've seen some amazing results with it. Yeah. That's really cool. I love the angle of telling a story related to the listings or the, the buyer transaction. And then, you know, we, we talk about this a lot privately within our group is that, you know, facts tell, stories sell, and mm -hmm. being able to paint that relatable experience it, to help others resonate with it and see themselves within it is, I think, a really creative way because I think most people, when it comes to postcards, are just doing, you know, selling, selling, selling mm -hmm. instead of value. And that value that you create, again, so many people, it's, it's all about that desired outcome is people either a want to sell their house at a great price in a small amount of time, or they want to find their perfect home despite the interest rates, the landscape of the market and all these things. And when you can connect with people on that emotional level and somebody can say, Hey, I saw myself in John and Sally, you know, we're looking for that same experience. It makes it a lot easier. And, and that really helps you stand out from the chaos of every other agent sending the same thing to the same moxes every single month, right? A hundred percent, man. It's, it's really, it's, it's that creative way to market your business and market yourself, you know, finding, finding an avenue that not many other realtors use and then, you know, exploiting that and going all in on that. And one of the reasons I, I decided to do things like that is because I was getting postcards in my neighborhood from other, you know, from other realtors, but then I would see the postcard and I'm like, this, this doesn't this doesn't entice me to want to reach out or want to you know get get information it's just oh look i just sold this house down the street for this much if you want to sell call me like very basic a lot of unfortunately i'm not real not many realtors have a marketing mindset when it comes to like finding creative ways to market yourself as an agent and so that gives me all the opportunity to stand out in a different way from from the crowd and and that has been what's been able to build bring those results from the postcards for sure that's super cool and, and i've never heard anybody really phrase it that way so i hope people take that to, to heart and actually implement it and you know that kind of then makes me curious what other lead gen efforts and avenues do you see working right now because i think again that's one of those cases where so many people are now familiar with facebook ads or google ads and everybody's running the same one doing the same thing in every market all the time um and oftentimes people are just looking for that perfect templated ad that works in every market every time for every person, which doesn't exist. You have to find out what works well for you, what's authentic to you. So, you know, you've obviously done incredibly well with production and closing consistent deals year over year. What other lead generation strategies are you kind of imploring into your business right now? Yeah, I, I still do. You know, when I started my business, I did a lot of cold calling and I still do cold calling. That's still a, a major part of my lead gen strategy. So, so that's what I, 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 like I said before, I, I think it's very important for us to stick to a handful of lead strategies that, that you can do consistently and, and just do it for the long haul. So for me, it's been, you know, social media has been so powerful, you know, uh, posting, you know, just organic content as well as, you know, running some paid ads as well. Uh, the marketing strategy and then cold calling. Cold calling has been a huge part of my business, um, spe specifically for listings, right? And so when you start, like when most agents start, you have more time than you have money to invest in your business, right? So you're going to be the one making all these calls, pounding the phones and and getting getting potential appointments. Um, once you start building, uh, you know, a, a consistent business and you start being able to create some revenue for yourself, 
you can then reinvest in those marketing channels through like outsourcing some of those things. So I've outsourced my, my cold calling and now I just call, I, I don't call it cold calling. Now I call it warm calling. Cause I'm literally just calling back the people that showed interest and, and, uh, you know, creating appointments from there. Um, but those have been my, my top three lead gen strategies. I, I stick to those. I don't, I don't steer off too much. You know, I, I won't say that I, I haven't fallen for the, the shiny object syndrome in real estate. Cause it, it does happen. You come across as something that you're like, Oh, that looks neat. I want to see if I can implement that in my business. Um, but you know, I, I stick to the, 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 the core three in my business and that's been what's built my business to where, where we're at now. Like, like me and my wife, we, we run it as a team. We consistently close now at this point for the past three years, we've consistently closed over 50 transactions every single year. We've done over 20 million in volume every single year from these three strategies. Yeah, that's, that's a really important takeaway. Um, in terms of being able to find what works for you and just sticking with it because that distraction overwhelms and, and you know, flusters so many people and, and it might not be the sexiest strategies. It might not be the latest, greatest, whatever, but if it works, don't stop. And I think a lot of people will do, you know, uh, they'll, they'll do an activity that starts to generate them business, but maybe it's not the most enjoyable thing. And when they get the business, they're like, okay, now I could stop and, and now I can start doing the fun stuff. But if you look at a lot of the top agents, you know, that both of us know and including yourself, they just do the basics and the fundamentals consistently every single day for years. Um, and it works for them. And I think it's important for people to take that to heart and say, I don't need to do what Mike did. I don't need to do what Mauricio did. I need to figure out what works for me. And that's going to be what I do every single day. Um, instead of just trying to do what everybody else is doing and not really looking within and saying, well, I actually don't mind this, so I can do it for an extended period of time. With your yeah. cold calling strategy, I would love to dive a little bit deeper into that in terms sure. of, okay, you've been doing it for quite some time. In the beginning, you know, obviously you alluded to the fact that now you're kind of warm calling and calling people back that are in the database. But in the beginning, who are you targeting what were you going after? What was kind of your script process in order to start to build momentum? Because I think right now, based on the landscape of the market, it, it's not the time to be putting all of your eggs in the basket of delayed gratification lead gen efforts. And that means from my perspective, only doing YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or Facebook ads or like if people are serious about getting paid soon, you need to start putting the boots on the ground and actually doing stuff that gives you now business. A lot of that comes down to prospecting. So how did that journey start for you and, and what kind of approach did you take? Yeah, I, I definitely learned that lesson early on, right? Like in order to build now business, you want to get in pe in front of people that are ready to transact now, right? And, and the easiest way to do that is getting in front of people that are actively raising their hands saying, hey, I'm ready to sell or I want to sell. And it just hasn't happened yet. Uh, and, th and that for me was for sale by owners and expired listings, just like just like most realtors. That's the that's the the book of of sellers that I went after. Um, and yes, I mean there there are a lot of agents that call these specific uh, groups, uh, and so you do have to be a little bit creative with your approach in terms of your your conversation and and, and the scripts you use. Um, I wouldn't really call it scripts. I would say having more of an outline of how you want the like how you want to lead that conversation. Um, but that that has been like the, the the main focus. And in my market, you know, I've seen a lot of success with that because you know that there are a lot of people that call, but not many people can get the appointment or get the listing. And uh, for me, it always came down to like just providing the value and providing the uh, most honest information that I can provide. Uh, whether they, they chose to hire me or not, at least I felt, you know, comfortable that I provided them the most accurate information that I knew that, I, that was available. I've had situations, you know, especially with expired listings, you know, I've had situations where a, a seller would tell me, Hey, we didn't choose you because this other agent said he could sell it for more. And then they call me back, you know, six months later when that agent couldn't, and they say, Hey, you, you, you were... The, the only one that was honest with the pricing, let's let's go with you, right? Um, you don't get you don't get those all the time, and unfortunately, that's just the reality of the competition in this business. Um, there are going to be 
you know, unfortunately there, there are going to be realtors out there that just tell sellers or tell prospects what they want to hear to earn the business. But that's never been my approach. And that's, that, that's something that I've, I'm very proud to say that, you know, I've lost business that way, but I I'm okay with it because I know, again, I, I'm not just telling people what they want to hear in order to earn their business. I, 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 I treat my business with the, you know, the, the utmost, uh, eth ethical way that I want to run it. And I'm proud of, I'm proud of that fact. So, but yes, uh, cold, cold calling has been such an impactful part of the business. Having the proper scripts on, on how you want to lead the conversation is so important. And then the follow-up to that too, making sure that you have the proper follow-up strategy after a cold call. Like, you know, if you've built a good conversation, you want to have a good, uh, what's next and when is what I call it. Like what's the next action step and when are we taking that action step? And yeah, setting definitely. that expectation with your, with your leads. Of course. And, and so if somebody was to start cold calling now, what kind of angle of attack would you recommend somebody taking? Would it be expireds, FISBOs, uh, kind of, you know, looking at a farm area and what kind of maybe introductory angle would you take when it comes to the opening up that dialogue and that script that kind of controls the conversation? Yeah, I, I would definitely say focusing in on for sale by owners and honestly, for, for rent by owners, if, if there's a lot of for rent by owners in your market, focusing on those as well, because a lot of times uh, I say this a lot, but a, a lot of times people don't know what they don't know. And sellers are the same way. They don't know what they don't know. So, you know, you never know why they chose to sell it on their own. It could be because they want to save on the commission or it could be because they're uninformed of the numbers. And it's our job as the professionals to explain that to them and and provide them value and, and give them alternative options uh and if and if you can make it a possibility where it's a win-win even better right and so i would start with those for sale by owners for rent by owners and and expired listings as well expireds are great because they're people that have actively had their house on the market and for whatever reason it it, it couldn't sell right so finding out that motivation and finding out that reasoning um let them let them talk you want to you want to just open up dialogue and, and allow them to speak. Like when it comes to, to expireds, like the, the question I'll ask is like, you know, why do you think your, your house didn't sell? And then just open the, open the dialogue, let them, let them share. Cause the, the, the hack there is they're literally going to tell you what, what didn't work the last time so that you can then do the opposite. If they told you my agent didn't communicate, communicate, right? If they told you they didn't market the property uh, properly, make sure that you do what you can to market the property correctly right so um just open up opening up that conversation coming from us from a uh, a space of curiosity and not having uh, what we call commission breath not just going after the listing like let me get the appointment let me let me lock in this contract no it's coming up coming with um a, a a position of uh discovery and 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 curiosity and finding out if this really is a person you can assist because the real the reality is we are, we are in a sales business and sales is a numbers game. And the reality is that you're not going to be the best fit for every buyer and every seller. And you have to be okay with letting go of that. You have to be okay with losing business because then it gives you more time and more opportunity to then focus on the business that you, you can actually work with and you can handle and you want to work with. Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of agents don't have that luxury, especially when you first start off. So you go after every opportunity that you can get your hands on and, you start to learn some of these things of like who your ideal client is that you want to service and and the, the way you want to start running your business. Um, and once you get to this point, again, you got to you got to think about the long game. Once you get to the point, you know, five, 10 years down in your in your business, you then get the opportunity to turn away business if it's something that you don't align with or something that you don't, you know, see that you that works well in your business. Um, but it does take that time and 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 working on those skills i think that's that's the hard truth is most agents need to focus on on building those skills in sales we are we are we are in a sales business we're we're selling we're selling a service we're selling ourselves to to buyers and sellers and you have to learn how to communicate properly and effectively to be able to convert those people into your customers 100 percent, and and you know i i think that approach really stands out now because a lot of people are going in with this script that it, you know they're literally reading off a piece of paper from somebody else and 
if they get thrown with some sort of objection that comes out of left field and it's not on that piece of paper, they don't know what to do. They get tongue tied and then they, they, they start fumbling and then they lose the opportunity. Whereas I think, you know, I've always taken the, pro the approach of, you know, value driven, but also questions control conversations. And if you ask the right questions and you get the ammunition of what they care about and you identify the motivation, you know, you can now tailor not your script, but your knowledge base to be able to navigate that conversation to exactly what they care about, not what you assume the average person in their situation cares about. And 100%. being able to have that open dialogue is is so, so powerful. You know, obviously, Mauricio, being a, a you know, having a team and a brokerage, you've, you've worked with a lot of agents and you've kind of seen it all. And mm -hmm. where, I'd, where I'd like to kind of get your your advice on is, Obviously, right now, the market's a little bit crazy. A lot of people are feeling burnt out, overwhelmed, distracted. A lot of people are leaving the industry. And yeah. so the two kind of contrasting questions that I'd love to ask is, based on based on the average agent, what are the, the most common struggles you see people have? And then in contrast to that, if somebody's saying, hey, I really shit the bed the last six months of the last year, whatever. I'm ready to start fresh. What are some best practices that you would tell somebody to do as a new agent to say, for the next 90 days, the, this is all I got in me. I'm going to give it my best. What do I need to do in 90 days to kind of get things rocking and rolling? Yeah, I think I think both those questions can be answered the same way is yeah. building the foundation. You know, a lot of agents neglect the fact that they have to build a foundation in their business. Um, I learned this very early on from one of my mentors who told me that as you start your business, you want to you want to build your business to the point where if you got a hundred clients today, like a hundred buyers that are ready to buy or a hundred sellers that are ready to sell, you can handle it. Like your business now today can handle it. Uh, and, and if you build that foundation for your business now, then when you do get to that point, you you already know how to handle it, right? So making sure that you have the right foundation in terms of, you know, the CRM, your follow-up systems, um, your, uh, you know, automating parts of your business that you can automate uh, and just getting all that dialed in from the, from early on it is going to be so crucial to the, to the growth and the trajectory that your business can have. Um, and I would say like for an agent that's, you know, that, that uh, is ready to start fresh, you know, for, for the next 90 days, doing those consistent actions. So finding those things that can move the needle in the business, we've talked about it already, right? The the daily non-negotiables, establishing what that is for you because it's different for everyone, right? And you have to know, that's where you have to kind of take an internal audit of your business and yourself and say like, what am I good at? What do I like doing? What can I also do that can benefit my business and move my business forward? What are those money-making activities that I enjoy and what can I see myself doing for the next year, two years, three years, you have to think longevity in the business. Uh, and you start that now you start that today, you take action, you, you take action daily. And, and don't, don't default from there. Don't get distracted by the shiny object syndrome and, and, and the other things that get thrown out in this industry. I mean, we're, we're in such a volatile time with this with our industry, with you know, the NAR settlements and agents leaving the business and agents literally having to reinvent their business and their business model because of these changes, right? So I think it is a perfect opportunity for not only new agents, but seasoned agents or agents that maybe need a, a, a new different perspective on how they should be running their business to look at their business uh, from an overview standpoint and figure out what holes they can fill in their business in the, in the foundation of, of creating that longevity uh, to be able to, again, be able to handle those hundred buyers and sellers at a time. What, what would that look like for you? Um, a lot of people can't fathom that idea, but if if you're already thinking like that, then it won't it won't it won't happen. So you have to have that growth mindset to be able to say like, hey, at one point, I'm going to get to a point. Maybe right now you do you're working with one client and, and you you can barely figure out how to handle them. Then think, okay, how can I do this with five clients? Because that's a very attainable reality. You can go from one to five clients pretty quickly if you implement some of these strategies, and then double that. How do, how will your business look? How different will it look if you if you're working with ten clients and then twenty clients, and then you start seeing the the gaps that you can fill in your business, uh, and then you just keep doing those those things consistently to get you to that point, and and it will happen. It's not a matter of if; it's a matter of of when.
Yeah, hundred percent. And and it kind of reminds me of the book, The E Myth, of start with the end in mind. You know, identify the business that you want to have and start executing today as if you had it, because it's the only way that you're going to actually be able to get there. And I think a lot of people are playing too small so that when they fall short of their goals, they're, they're falling pretty short because they didn't even set their goals that high. But if you set them higher and execute, like that's the standard and the expectation that you have of yourself. If you don't hit that, that's okay because I'd rather hit 50% of 50 deals than 50% of 20. And so I really, I really, really like that perspective. And that kind of segues to a really important talking point uh, that I think is going to connect with a lot of people is with that being said, with that goal, with you doing over 50 deals a year uh, consistently for years on end, let's talk about the balance aspect and being able to balance that while having kids. And, you know, obviously your spouse is involved in, in the business with you, but what does that look like when being able to say, okay, we need to build this business that you've done so very successfully, but I also know that that hasn't come at the cost and the expense of quality time with your family. How do you balance that dynamic and, and what kind of advice do you have for people that maybe feel like they're falling short on that side of their business and their life? Yeah, it, it's it's a hard realization and, and you want to, you want to find that realization before it's too late, right? For me, I I, I figured that out um, after we had our first kid, you know, I was spending at the time I was a, a team lead and I ran the brokerage, right? So I was wearing many hats. I was doing not only my own personal production, running a team, managing a team, but then also managing the office and everything that comes with actually running a brokerage. Um, and so I was having very long days, man. I was at the office, you know, 8 a.m. to like, sometimes midnight, just working on every aspect of building those businesses. And when you have a toddler or or when you have a a baby at home, um, it's hard to to kind of fathom how quickly they develop and how quickly they grow. And I, I, you know, I, I was missing milestones in my in my first kid's life that I felt, you know, very guilty of because you know, to me, I was I was thinking, well, I'm doing this for them. I'm building this for their future. And I thought this was the only way I, I, I could do it. I have to work these long hours. I have to sacrifice these this time to make it happen. Um, quickly realized, uh, you know, I, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, just like a lot of, you know, a lot of us do. You start to realize that you can have a balanced life and build wealth in, in many other ways by leveraging your time, right? And so... <clears throat> That's kind of around the same time that we started looking at, you know, the opportunity with EXP and and all the potential that you can really create by leveraging your 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 knowledge and your time with this model. Um, and once I once I came to that realization, um, I, I, it was kind of it, it opened up a whole new world. It's like you know you you taking the red pill. Like once you yeah. you, you can't unsee it once you see it, right? And so that's what then started you know, planting that idea into my mind of like, how can I now leverage my skills, my time, my value and, and duplicate it in other ways. Uh, and that's when I learned about RevShare. And that's why I learned about all these other different aspects of, of generating wealth that now I am in a position, you know, we have th- three kids with the fourth on the way. Uh, we've only been with EXP for a year. I've taken more vacations this year and been so, so much more less stressed while still making the same, if not more income, and now having so much more time to spend uh, in those milestones of my of my kids, man, being being an involved parent is something that I, I really wanted to make sure that I that I was doing. Uh, And I I realized that the old way of doing business is is just that the old way, right? There's new ways, better ways, more lucrative ways and ways that you can leverage your time while still creating the same uh, level of income, if not more income for your business. Uh, and so that's what we've been doing now, like just leveraging that, leveraging opportunities, uh, knowing like <clears throat> knowing in your business how you can delegate things to free up some of that time. Right. Um, I think uh, something that, that was really impactful for me is I, I, I like to read a lot of books and I like to listen to a lot of podcasts and and, and do a lot of that stuff. Um, uh, Naval Ravikant's book, you know, the other almanac kind of teaching you the how to build wealth and how to leverage, you know, equity, you know, and and I I think a lot of us don't realize that we're only so limited with our working hours of what we can do and and how much we can create. Whereas once you start building equity or you start leveraging uh, your your time that way, 
it, it opens up a whole new world of, of, of wealth and, and more opportunities and more freedom, which I think is what all of us seek, right? Is, is the freedom to be able to do what we want with our time and not just be stuck in the same old grind. Um, and you can do that through real estate, you know, through this model, which is amazing. Yeah, man, it's it's so important for people to think about. And, you know, I turned a blind eye for that uh, to that for many, many years. And I, I saw the repercussions of it. And so, yeah. you know, I encourage people to, ha- you know, really understand that there's there is a time and a place to go all in, double down and make sacrifice. But then there's also a time and a place where you need to realize that that's not sustainable forever and that you need to evolve and you need to adjust and you need to look at that bigger picture of you know the different aspects of life that mean the most because at the end of the day if you've got all the money in the world but your relationships are in shambles you're unhealthy you're exhausted you're you know out of shape and and all of these other areas of your life are falling apart that money don't doesn't make a single difference and so you know i think you've got such a wealth of experience and and you've been able to you know do things so well and you've seen you've been able to become this guiding light for so many people. I'd love for you to talk about, you know, that transition as to why you, you know, decided to explore coming over here to EXP and and what could people expect when partnering with you? Because I know that you've got a a servant's heart and whenever people do align with you, you know, you really do help them break that business down and, and help them, you know, build a proven path to get to, you know, where you're at of doing consistently 50 deals a year. Yeah. You know, um, I thought just like most agents, I thought, you know, the end goal was owning the brokerage, like being the owner. Right. Um, But you don't realize that that's production and ownership are a complete like two completely different animals with their own set of challenges and obstacles that you have to overcome. And in order for you to be successful, like you can't really be successful at both unless you're willing to spend all the time, energy and effort that's needed to be successful in both. Uh, And that's where leverage comes into place. Right. So. One, when we got connected with this opportunity, it, it, it came across um, through one, one of our partners, Garth, who who had a very similar story than I did. You know, he had his own brokerage, built multiple offices, and you know realized realized quickly, like we realized quickly, that that wasn't the path that we wanted to see our, our, our the business. Um, and we knew there was another way where we could still build the community that we've been building with and and you know when when you start a brokerage it's your baby right it's it's you've you've put you put so much time sacrifice energy and effort into it that it's hard to let go and and a lot of that is also ego for some people but it's hard to let go so we were always we were always looking for a place where we can continue building that you know that that community those values that we want that we've been creating within our brokerage uh the brand you know keeping our logos but be able to align with a company that's now forward thinking that's cloud-based that allows us the opportunity to expand farther than just our local like presence um, while still being able to maintain all that while still being able to maintain our our core values still may be able to maintain our community uh and and align ourselves with with like-minded agents and once we've once we made that transition we just felt this weight lift off our shoulders and we just felt more confident in being able to uh, uh you know invite agents to see the potential that they can build in their business and still have that mentorship uh the role that that i've had with with all of our other agents man i've been able to you know been doing this for so long we've been able to help other agents become six-figure earners i've had other agents go on and build their own businesses their own offices their own everything right so we've seen it and we've seen the potential that 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 can be done in this business but now with this model we can really like take it to a next level in terms of the people we can reach Uh, so leveraging that leveraging that opportunity has been such an impactful uh and clearing just like a clearing way to do business for us uh and and for where our family is man like for us that's that's the that's the reason why i did everything right we all have to find our why for me it was building the future for my family uh and once we came across this opportunity it was kind of like a no-brainer like once you see it once you lay it all out like if if you truly see your business as a business you make business decisions that make sense for your business right so once we broke down the numbers and we looked at everything We realized how much money we were leaving on the table by not having this model in place and how much more potential opportunities we can create with with uh, aligning our business this way. And so 
it's hard for people to realize it's hard for having to, to have that conversation but once you see it like i said once you see it you can unsee it once you know the potential um it's all about just knowing it in yourself that you can you can re you can achieve these things and there's more to real estate than just a traditional transaction and and getting you know a, a trophy at the end of the year for your work but nothing else right here not only do you get that but you also get equity ownership and a bunch of other op like you know income producing opportunities um, just by the sheer fact of being involved in this group and, and the wolf pack and everything yeah man it's it's so important and i think again it comes down to a lot of people aren't willing to kind of set the emotions aside and look at opportunities logically and even vet with an open mind if it's for yeah. them or not and if it's not that's completely okay but at least go in with an open mind and say okay this has been proven it's working for others i need to explore it let's look at the data let's look at the numbers let's take a very factual approach to it instead of getting an emotional approach and just battling back and forth based on assumptions and so you know it's it's been amazing to be a part of that process with you and i know that right now you know people need people like you in their business and in their corner more than ever because a lot of people are giving up they feel lost they feel overwhelmed and distracted and they need somebody that they can lean on who's done it not just for themselves multiple times over, but for other people actively doing it in today's market. And I know that you and Garth, you know, are both incredible leaders and examples of exactly that. So, um, Mariso, again, I wanted to say a huge thank you for for being able to come on here and, and share all of this value. Um, and I really do encourage people to book a call with you and talk about what it could be like to get the support from you, Garth, and myself to be able to take their business to where it probably could be if they just had the right people in their corner. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. If, if, if you're an agent who is struggling in your business now, you have no direction, you don't know where to go, or you just want, you want to take your business to that next level. Um, surrounding yourself with the people that have been there and done that and can teach you to do the, the same things uh, will, will make a huge difference in your business. You know, they say you are the outcome of the people you surround yourself with. So, you know, getting finding rooms like that and, and, and being open to the, those opportunities is the only way that you're going to improve your your business and every other aspect of your life. 100%, man. Well, again, I'm going to link all of your incredible content below, Mauricio, as well as an opportunity to book a call with you to talk about that. Um, and again, it's it's been incredible to see your leadership and, and I really hope people take advantage of that. I appreciate you, Mike. Thank you for your time, man. You're the best. You bet. Thanks, guys. Make sure you check out the next video. Hit Mauricio up. Don't take that opportunity lightly. He is going to be there to help you and so will I. And let's make this the best year ever.